Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and in this week's video I'm going to be talking about white holes. So let's jump straight to it. You may be more familiar with the term black hole, a region in space where the gravity is so strong that not even light can escape it. These extremely dense astronomical objects typically pack masses several times that of our sun into a sphere of just a few kilometers in radius. Now, we know that Einstein predicted the existence of black holes way back in 1916. And although at least 10 million black holes are believed to exist in our galaxy, the Milky Way, and a supermassive black hole at the center of every galaxy, that's two trillion supermassive black holes in our observable universe alone. It wasn't until recently, in 2019, that the first observation of a black hole was observed. Well, at least its event horizon, the boundary of no return. Now, white holes are a hypothetical concept, existing as the exact time reversal of a black hole. Like black holes, they are a region of space where there exists a singularity. Here, all physics breaks down, but in the case of a white hole, nothing can enter the region of space, not even light and light, energy matter, and information can escape. In this sense, if you took the black hole and played it backwards, you would get a white hole. White holes are supposedly continuously ejecting material. Nothing can get close to it. This means that if any white hole were to exist, we should be able to detect it very easily. Much easier than black holes because of the continuous ejection of material. In fact, initially, it was believed that some of the brightest objects in our universe, quasars and active galactic nuclei, AGN, were white holes. But this is strange because, like any other astronomical object, white holes have mass. Their gravity is attracting matter like any other mass. But the objects falling towards the white hole would never actually reach the white hole's event horizon. Over time, as material is ejected from the white hole, we would expect a sheet of material to build up at the event horizon. And eventually, the gravitational interaction between this shell material and the white hole itself would collapse, and the white hole would collapse into a black hole. This is known as the death of white holes, in which case white holes shouldn't exist, and indeed none have ever been observed. The Big Bang is the most similar thing we know of to the description of a white hole, a singularity in which matter was ejected in all directions. But this event was not continuous, it happened within an instant. This then solves the problem of the death of the white holes. If all matter is ejected in an instant, then we can only detect a white hole in the short window where the material is ejected. The white hole then would not be the universe, but the birth of the universe itself. Now, this is the only thing similar to a white hole that we know of, but there's a big problem. There are some set rules that govern the universe that we live in, and one of these rules is that information cannot be created or destroyed, i.e. the amount of mass energy in the universe is constant. Take, for example, a star. When a star dies and goes supernova, that material doesn't disappear. All the matter ejected replenishes the interstellar medium with gas and dust that can then be used to create new stars. The information in the star is not destroyed, it simply changes form from star to gas and dust and then to a new star. But the information is never lost. But material that passes the event horizon of black hole, it can't get back out, it's lost. Stephen Hawking showed that over time, black holes would evaporate, taking all that information with it. The information is then lost forever. To get around this, some astronomers believe that the singularity at the center of a black hole actually leads to another point in the universe, or perhaps even a different universe. The other end of a black hole is suspected to be a white hole, where all the accreted mass energy is ejected. If the Big Bang was a strong white hole, then these would be weak white holes, dubbed small bangs. If weak white holes exist, they should be highly energetic with a range of intensities. 
they would be fast, spawning at any time, and show up all over the universe. All of these requirements are met by gamma ray bursts. These are the brightest explosions in our universe. Long gamma ray bursts last over two seconds and have already been attributed to be caused by the collapse of a massive star into a black hole at the end of its life cycle. These are actually accompanied by a supernova explosion creating these gamma ray radiation. Short gamma ray bursts, those lasting under two seconds, were attributed to the merger of two neutron stars or a neutron star with a black hole to form an even bigger black hole. These are not accompanied by a supernova. In recent years, however, some long gamma ray bursts have been observed without supernova explosions. GRB 060505 and GRB 060614. These have been dubbed hybrid gamma ray bursts and their origins are still a mystery. Could they be our white holes? Alternatively, white holes may even be the end of a black hole itself after it evaporates, in which case it's unlikely to have happened yet. A black hole with the same mass as our sun would take 10 to the power of 67 years to evaporate. That's much, much longer than the current age of our universe at just 10 to the power of 10 years. So if it is true, then we wouldn't be alive to even find out. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Where do you think the white holes are hiding? Let me know in the comment section below. And in the meanwhile, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.